that you're about to renovate a house and you say to yourself, you know, I don't know much about renovating, but it seems smart to partner with a contractor, right? After all, I mean, that's what contractors do. So if I partner with a contractor, then I'm eliminating all that risk, all the stuff that I don't know how to do, right? You think um, it seems it's going to be cheaper. It seems like they're going to do a better job. Um, it seems like I don't even have to babysit them, right? Because uh, after all, I'm partnering with them and they are they have a stake in the property. Notice how I said it seems and not it is. Not everything is as it seems. In this episode, I'm actually going to share with you the three biggest problems that you are going to face when you decide to partner with a contractor. And then I'm also going to show you three ways to make sure you can limit that risk as much as possible. So with that being said, let's get into the show. This is John Barbera with an investor's journey, bringing you real tips and strategies to help you invest in real estate the right way. In this channel, we share lessons learned as full-time real estate investors like this video right here. So if throughout the video, you're finding value, consider coming over to YouTube and just giving that thumbs up. It means so much to us. In case you didn't know, this is actually a continuation of a series that I'm doing on flipping houses the right way in 2021. So make sure you check out that series. The information is going to be in the description below, but this is a continuation on that series. And in case you did not know, if you text us AIJ, AIJ to 210-794-9898, you will be a part of an insider community where I share insider tips and strategies, things that we're doing in the moment, real time, which sometimes takes weeks, if not months, for me to create an episode on. So you'll be able to learn this stuff in real time. So make sure you text us AIJ and Investor's Journey to 210-794-9898. So as real estate investors, we've actually been flipping houses, rehabbing houses since early 2016. And we've averaged somewhere north of 10 properties a year, more or less. Um, so we've dealt with quite a bit of contractors. We've done a lot of rehabs and in doing so, we've learned all the good and the bad. We've tried to partner with contractors plenty of times because in our head, we think just as you do. If I can get a contractor on my team, it's going to make that part of the business that much easier, right? Every single time it's been a nightmare to do. All right. And it's been, a, it's been always a move that we've regretted. It's never been a move that we're like, you know, hey, it was tough, but you know, we made out pretty well or, you know, all in all it worked out. Now it, it's been always, we, we haven't lost money, which is the good part, but it's always been something that's like, you know, during it, it's been stressful as all hell. And when we were done, it was just like, Jesus, thank God this is over. You know, it, so I'm going to share with you all of those shitty situations that we've gotten ourselves into. And I hope that this resonates. I hope this helps you in avoiding this mistake moving forward. Cause I'm still seeing investors right now that are partnering with their contractors. And just as I'm going to share with you, they are also facing the same, if not worse problems. So let's, I really hope that this helps and this helps you out when you're deciding to make this move. So told you three big problems that it is working with contractors. One of them, is that they are actually, when you're partner with a contractor, it's actually not cheaper. So you think, hey, I'm gonna partner with a contractor, this is gonna keep my rehab costs very low. No, it hasn't. It has not kept any rehab costs as low as you think it would have. Typically, when you're partner with a contractor, you're doing it because you might have a marginal deal, right? Uh, that's when we've done it. We've done it when we've had a marginal deal. So we say, Hey, if we partner with the contractor, we can keep that labor cost lower because now they're not charging us for the labor and we'll split the profits on the back end, which could be bigger, could not be, I don't know, but that's a risk that we're all taking. So those are the times that we kind of chosen to partner with contractors. But what has ended up happening is that we actually end up paying more for the repairs 
and for all that than we would have if we would have just hired the contractors. So why does this happen? One is the majority of contractors do not know how to bid a job correctly. And I know, I know, I know. You're saying, how? You know, th that's their job. This is what they do. How the hell can they not bid a job correctly? They just can't. The majority of contractors do not know how to bid a, a job. Now, this may mean they don't know how to estimate how much the materials are actually going to cost. But the majority of the time, it means that they don't know how to estimate the amount of time it's actually going to take to do the job. A lot of times they are underestimating the amount of time it's going to take them to accomplish the job that you're hiring them to do. So what ends up happening is it's taking them a lot more time, a lot more man hours, a lot more, you know, maybe materials on their end that they got to supply. And little by little, they start realizing they're losing money. And when they start realizing that they're losing, you know, this is where it becomes a big problem when you're even partnering with a contractor. So uh, an issue, another issue is that a lot of these contractors, they've one, either been working with homeowners, so they're not used to bidding a project for an investor. What is the difference between working for a homeowner and working for an investor? A homeowner is a one and done type of business, right? So usually the markups are higher because there's no repeat business there. Now, when you work with an investor, there is repeat business. So you tend to give them a little bit better of a price because they're going to keep more business coming your way. So that's the biggest difference. A lot of contractors are only used to working with homeowners and they don't know how to bid correctly to work with an investor. Sometimes they come severely underbid, which is a big problem even for you, because again, if they're not making money, they start finding other jobs, they start cutting corner, or they just won't show up anymore to your project. Or they overbid, where then it costs you a bundle to even do the project, or maybe you just end up not hiring them. So those are the issues. So they're used to working with homeowners. They don't know how to work with investors. Another of the big problems is that, again, like I said before, they're new to this. A lot of these people, they, they were probably sheet rockers, tile setters, you know, roofers, whatever it is. And now they decided to become GCs, contractors. The problem is like what they're good at is doing sheet rock, right? Or doing whatever it is they were doing before, painting, tiles, whatever it is. Now that they're doing the whole thing, they don't know how to estimate those costs. They don't know what that actually means. They got to get they got to go out and find subs, right? Subcontractors, people that know how to do those jobs. They got to go out and hire the people. And when they end up doing this hiring people that don't have experience, don't know what the hell they're doing because they're cheap, right? Those people are cheaper, so then it increases their profit margin. So that also creates a big issue for you. And this is going to be by far the biggest one is that they do not know how to manage their time. And this is something that I, I've come across with pretty much every contractor we've worked with. Um, and if you're listening, I'm sorry to hurt your feelings, but it's true. Um, this has happened with pretty much every contractor we've worked with. They don't know how to manage their time. So what do I mean by this? If I'm paying you $1,000 to do a job, and it takes you two days to do that job, you made $1,000 in two days. If it takes you two weeks to do that job, you still made $1,000, but it just took you two weeks to do. Now, where do you make more money? Doing it in two days or doing it in two weeks? All right, I hope that answer is very obvious to you. It's in two days. If you can do the job in two days, you're gonna make more money. The problem is what I see with a lot of them is they show up late to the job, they take a million breaks and they leave early and then they work very, very slow. I mean, so many of the contractors that I've worked with, I go to the jobs and they're, they're very slow, very slow to do almost any of the, any of the scopes, any of the things that we're doing. And that's the thing you're working so slow. You do not know how to make money because it takes you so long to get through a scope that you're saying, well, I can do this job, but it's going to take me five days. And it's like, no, it shouldn't take you more than three. You understand? So now if you can, if your contractor can be more effective on the time that they're putting in, they're going to be able to charge less because they're going to be able to make more money. 
So it makes it better for you and it makes it better for them. Everybody makes money here. You understand? So that's the biggest issue. So when you're saying, oh, it's cheap. No, it has not been our experience that partnering with a contractor has been cheaper. Our experience has been that partnering with a contractor has ended up costing us more money to get the project done. Another problem, bad work, right? You, you think, hey, I'm partnering with a contractor. They're going to do quality work. That, again, hasn't been our experience. Um, in partnering with contractors, what we've realized is kind of leading to number one, you know, that because they're perhaps realizing that they're undershot, you know, that bid, they said, they told you, yeah, we can partner. This is going to be awesome. We're going to split the profit, blah, 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 you know, and it's going to cost 35 grand to renovate, 60 grand to renovate, whatever it is. And then they get into it and all of a sudden they're like, oh shit, this is going to be, you know, 50% more. This is going to be more money than I thought because man, now there's this problem. Now there's that problem. Now they start either cutting corners, doing cheap work, rushed work. They try rushing things, stepping over kind of scopes, cutting corner, uh, you know, like skipping a scope or not finishing it completely. The same thing. They end up hiring very inexperienced or new subs or whatever they are just because they're cheaper and these people do bad work. So where does this hurt you is that all of that bad work causes delays because it causes you to redo the work. It causes more problems in the project. So when you're thinking, oh, I'm going to partner with a contractor because they're going to do better work. No, that that honestly has not been our experience either. Uh, they haven't done better work on top of it's kind of been the opposite. They've done worse work because they've rushed through it or they start falling behind or they can't get the right people. And they, you know, they told you one thing and they're not being able to deliver it. So it just gets very messy and it creates a lot more problems. And then problem number three, you're saying, Hey, <laughs> they don't require any adult supervision. Wow. Was that an eye opener? They require, if not more adult supervision than working with a, just a regular contractor. The reason for this is the same thing. They get a little too overconfident sometimes. And when you're working on a project day in and day out, it's very easy to get tunnel vision. When you get tunnel vision, that means that you're going to the project so often that you miss the little things that you're not catching, right? And because they are your partners and essentially they control the whole scope, a lot of the times they open too many scopes up at the same time and then they don't close them all out as they should be. You know, they end up forgetting that they never finished this scope over here or did that scope over there. And in case you're not very clear on what the scopes of work are and everything, click up here, check out that video I created on scope of work. And it's also going to be in the description, eh, everything on scopes of work. So make sure you check that one out. They have problems creating that tunnel vision. So they have tunnel vision. They are not focused solely on the project. They're, they're missing things. And this is why it requires you to go. They also, majority of the time, they're not selecting the right materials because again, the same thing, they're thinking money. They're not thinking what's going to work the best, what's actually going to sell. And one thing as an investor, yes, we want to save as much money as possible while still doing the best job as possible. All right. This is the, the important part, right? You want to still deliver a great product to the end buyer. So. This is very crucial where you're selecting materials. You want to make sure that you don't just buy what's cheap. You buy what's good. There's a lot of times that you deal with a foundation that perhaps you fix a foundation, but there's still some, uh, you know, some unevenness or whatever it is. If you go and buy the cheapest laminate, let's say you're going to feel that so much more. Now, if you go and buy maybe a 12 millimeter laminate, it's going to hide that imperfection tremendously better. So you're saying, Hey, I'm spending more money on the laminate. Yes. But you're also avoiding a major issue when you go sell the house, because now they're not People are not feeling, uh, you know, the floor waving all across when you're walking. Now, these are things that if you, if you don't know about real estate, it makes it harder, but these are the things that sometimes contractors don't understand. They don't understand that it's not always about the money, but it's also about the finished product. Like, yes, it might save you some money here, but will it cost you the sell of the house? That's what you got to ask yourself. Now, another thing is that they're not very good at coordinating 
material delivery, material purchases with the scopes that need to be done. I mean, we see this over and over again, every time we partner with a contractor that they've been responsible for the materials, they don't get the materials there on time as they should be. You know, so they're, they're not ordering the material on time. It's gotten delayed. They have the scope. They have the contractors that are showing up and these guys, the material is not even on site. All of these things create so many problems because a lot of contractors that you're going to be working with, they know how to do the job, but they don't know how to run a business. They don't know how to actually run a project. And you know, this is beyond criticizing them for anything. It's just what is. So you need to be involved in those situations. You need to make sure that it's like, how's our scope look like? Okay. This is when we were trying to start, let's say the tile. Well, we need to make sure we have the tile in the house by this date. You understand? And if you're going right now, like the economy is like everything is you go to floor and decor or home Depot and you realize like, shit, this tile is going to take three weeks to deliver. Then you should be placing that order three to four weeks before that tile scope is needed. All right. Or you need to start shopping for a different type of tile. These are things that a lot of them wait till the last moment to do. And it's going to affect you. Other areas of managing is that a lot of them, they'll hire one trade at a time, right? Because oh, I don't like guys working on top of each other. It's the dumbest freaking thing these guys have in their head. Um, and it causes a lot of delays and problems for you. You got to help them coordinate. It's like, I'm not saying you have other subs and people working on top of each other, but they could be working at the same time because one's working interior, one exterior, one's working downstairs, one upstairs, one's working the kitchen, the other, the bedroom. Like, I mean, there's, there's ways that you can speed up a project. Also, they, they're, they don't fully know the process with the city. You know, we've had contractors that we partner with on new builds and stuff, and they talk all this shit that they know everything, yet everything is a surprise, right? Oh, the city did this. The city did that. Oh, my God. And it's like, dude, that was the benefit of partnering with you. You understand? If you didn't know any of these things, what's the difference between you not knowing and me not knowing? The difference is that I get to keep a lot more of the profit when I'm done if I'm doing it. You understand? Because... <laughs> At the end of the day, working with you has been the same as doing it by myself. So, you know, something to keep in mind. And these examples go on and on on all the problems that you're going to have. And if you are local to San Antonio or the San Antonio area, then text property tour to 210-794-9898. As every time we go check out one of our projects or go look at a property, I will text out to the community, let you guys know, and you are more than welcome to tag along. This is going to allow you to ask any questions that you may have, anything as we're doing the project so you can see everything from start to finish, how an actual project is handled, and how we are able to make money on all of our flips. So what is it that you can do to decrease these problems where there's three things that you can implement in order to do this? Now, please notice that I said decrease and not eliminate, all right? You're decreasing, but there's still going to be problems but we're, we're minimizing the scope of these problems and the effects of these problems. Number one, a detailed written scope of work. All right. Again, if you're not familiar with scopes of work, check out the link below. I'm going to be showing you that whole video that I did on how to put a scope of work together, but you want a written detailed scope of work because what this is going to do is it's going to eliminate a lot of errors, right? Because it kind of creates a checklist both for you and the contractor. So what this is, this helps you in is having them. Okay. What is this scope? What is that scope? This involves this, this involves that it helps when you have that tunnel vision, you have something to go back to and check Did I make sure to do this, 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 this. And as you're supervising, as you should be supervising the projects, you take that scope with you to make sure everything is being done. It's also going to help you when paying them, right? As far as, Hey, I need another draw. I need another draw. Well, the draws were set on these scopes being completed and you're asking for a draw here when you haven't completed this scope yet. You understand? Like we can't, we can't work that way. Like it's scope completed, draw gets done, scope completed, draw gets done. And again, check out that scope of work uh, video because I cover everything on how to do the draws, how to do all of that. Another thing that a detailed scope of work is going to help you in is it helps you eliminate the, you never said that because you're going to get that a lot. You're going to get, 
you know, we, we, we never talk about putting lights there. Or we never talked about, you know, putting trim back on even though we took it off. Um, all of that crap, it eliminates it because it's in the detailed scope of work. It's like, no, here it is. We talked about it. And guess what? If it isn't in the detailed, even if you tell me, oh, come on, it's common sense. You should have done blah, blah, blah. It's not in the scope. That's your problem. That's your lesson to learn for next time. Make sure it's in the scope because just as the scope is going to protect you, it's also going to protect them. All right. So a detailed scope of work, it goes a long way to protect you during this. Number two is the second way that you can help decrease the chances of a partnership going wrong is you have a partnership agreement. All right. And this is a written agreement, not a partnership like, hey, you and me, we're good. <laughs> Handshake. No, 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 no. This is a written agreement between you and the contractor on your partnership. And it's going to dictate who's responsible for what, what are the compensations? What happens if certain things don't get done? You want a written agreement before you get into any kind of partnership period, but mostly with a contractor. Now, if you will have contractors that they're like, oh, you know, the agreement, that's so silly. My word is my bond. My word is everything. Anybody that gives you any kind of crap over an agreement is somebody you should not be doing a partnership with, all right? A partnership is not just for you. It protects them and it protects your investors, all right? The partnership agreement keeps everybody honest. And that is what's crucial about it, is that you should not have any problem with signing a partnership agreement if you are thinking about doing what you said you were going to do. So if the contractor is going to do what they said they're going to do and they're not planning on screwing you over, they shouldn't have a problem signing it. The same with you. If you're not planning on screwing your contractor over, you should not have a problem creating one. All right. And this is created by an attorney. Please use a real estate attorney to create a partnership agreement. They're going to make sure everything is in place and everything and your contractor should have it reviewed by an attorney. Now, if either one of you are saying, man, you know, I don't have the money for a partnership agreement. I don't have the money for this. That's a waste of money. Don't flip a house. All right. Because if 500 bucks is really that big of a deal for you, you should not be flipping a house because guess what? Anything goes south you are royally screwed. Everybody is. So especially if you use an investor's capital to purchase that home, you and the contractor both kick rocks. Now that investor is holding the bag. So a good partnership agreement is going to protect everybody involved. And it's a must. It's a must when it comes time to doing a partnership. And rule number three, you must be present. What do I mean by being present? I mean that every time a scope of work is going to start or finish, you must be there. Okay. They're about to start doing the siding. Go to the job site. They're about to start laying the roof. Go to the job site. They're about to start doing the floors. Go to the job site. They're about to finish the roof and get paid or the siding and the floors. Go to the job site. Why? Because if you are there every time a scope is about to start or finish, you're there early enough to catch any problems that might cause delays or money down the line, right? If they're about to do the tile, hey, just making sure we're laying the tile this way. It's going in this direction. It's going to these areas. It's not going here, right? You want to lay that out. Hey, you're doing the siding. All right, let's make sure. All right, so we're going this way. We're doing the proper flashings. We're making sure that no water gets in. Everything is sealed, right? Cool. Awesome. You understand? Like you need to be there. You got to be there. Materials are arriving. Be there. Check. Here's the list of the materials that are getting delivered. Are these the materials that have been delivered? I mean, I cannot tell you the amount of times that we're there. The delivery guys are delivering the material and all of a sudden we get the wrong cabinets. We don't get enough cabinets. We don't get the right flooring. Uh, a million things happen with you being there. You're able to control that. Now, I know you're saying, well, that's what the contractor's for. Do you really want to rely the whole project on hoping that they do their job right? Especially when you've never partnered with this person before. No, don't do that. All right. Verify yourself. 
eventually, if you guys have done a bunch of projects and you're clicking and everything is going amazing, by all means, let them handle the whole thing. But at first, you are responsible. You're the investor. Take responsibility. That's why I say flip it, flipping houses isn't for everybody, all right? But if you're thinking of taking it on, these are the things that you have to do. Also, you want to be present every time there are inspections. Why? Here's a quick example. We had an inspection done on uh, one of our properties many years ago. It was the electrical. And they did a partial pass on the inspection. What does that mean? Is that they passed it, but then they also said that, hey, you got to make sure you fix these bullet points, right? So said to the electrician, I'm like, all right, so what's the process here? You fix the bullet points and then, you know, you call the guy back. Oh, no, no, no. You know, you just, as long as you fix them, it's good to go, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay. It wasn't like that. What ended up happening is when they called for the final inspection, the inspector comes and he's like, what about these bullet points? Did you fix them? Yeah. You didn't call me back. Well, you know, you know, I was going to fix them. I don't know you were going to fix them. You didn't call me back. Now, what do I do? Do I have to force you to rip up the sheetrock so I can see that you did it? I mean, you can see the problem that de uh, develops here. Luckily, you know, we talked to the inspector. We had a whole conversation. We were able to kind of crawl in the crawl space, take some pictures, show them that it was done. Um, but it could have been a big issue. If the inspector really wanted to, he could have definitely shut us down and forced us to open up the sheetrock. And this was already a project that we were getting royally screwed by one of the, co the main contractors. So you got to be present. And by being present so much, it actually shows your contractors that you're always there. And when it shows your contractor that you're always there, it makes it more difficult for them to try to get away with stuff or not show up to the site or maybe, you know, do loud music outside, bother the neighbors and make sure that they're always keeping a clean job site. They're keeping everything on, on task because they're like, hey, you know, the owners actually shows up quite frequently. You know, and that's something that we do on a consistent basis. John Barr, my business partner, he does all of our management for all of our projects. And he is there consistently every time there's a scope of work, material being done. Every time he's always there. He's always at every single one of our projects, checking in, talking to the guys, talking to the contractors, verifying. Is this good? Is that good? Is this still going? Every single time, all the time. So I hope you took a lot of notes. I hope this helped you rewind, re-listen to some of the parts. There's timestamps and everything below that you can actually fast forward or rewind to whatever position you want to listen to. Um, and make sure if you haven't already, here's the playlist on how to flip houses the right way in 2021. And here's more training down here on other stuff. So if you liked it, make sure to share it, give us a thumbs up and I'll catch you on the next one.